All right, folks, we are here at Bynum. I've got Yackleberry. Woo! And he's going to get his maiden voyage in the Delta V88 here on the middle, and then we're going to do the lower haul. Running at about 560 today, so well below the minimum suggested level for the lower. This one's in play, but it'll be good getting him down through there the first time. No push. Work on some little skill builder moves and stuff in the eddies and all that sort of thing. So, you ready? I'm ready. So Adam is not new to kayaking, but he is fairly new to whitewater kayaking. So there's gonna be a whole bunch of skills that you're gonna to wanna to tighten up. And it's almost like learning a new sport in some regards because you're able to do things you cannot do in the big long boats or the recreation style boats or a sit on top. A lot of that has to do with edge control and the maneuverability of the kayak, the responsiveness in the kayak and so on. So if you're gonna to have to start with a skill, I always start with rolling. And Adam's really got that down now. He's got a good solid roll. He lands about 95% of the time. And so now it's on to river running and reading skills. And there's no better place to start than with learning the eddy. And that's really what we're gonna focus on today as we make our run down the middle and the lower hall. We're gonna focus on catching just about every eddy we can find, big and small, until this becomes second nature. And that's exactly why we're on this run today. Even at low water, the middle and lower hall offers a plethora of eddy catching opportunities and other skill building chances. As you see, it's a little bit bony, but that's okay. What it means is there's just lots of places to dodge in and out of, lots of little eddies to catch, but it really doesn't punish you for your mistakes as the push of the water or the volume of the water is very low. So you can get away with little mistakes or you can miss an eddy and not have to pay higher consequences than trying to learn this on a river at proper flow. Don't be afraid of an elf run if you're trying to build some skills or if you're trying to learn a run for the first time. Elf runs can be big learning tools. Yep. One advantage we both have on this run is that I already know Yackleberry pretty well. I know how his mind works, I know about what skill level he's at, and about how aggressive he wants to get with his training. So that allows me to skip the feeling out stage and just go ahead and tailor a day custom made for Adam. And that's exactly what we do. We just work on eddies. Killing it. All right, so we just met the main man, Scott Gross, with Team River Runner in Fayetteville. And also we have Cheryl and Jim. And it looks like we have a new party of five. So middle and lower hall, here we come. You were too early by about eight feet. Huh? You were too early by eight feet. You stroked it like right here. Right. Wait for it, wait for it. Now I'm in it, so then you stroke. Okay. And it's like last minute, right when your bow is getting into the eddy. Okay. Okay. You can practice on the less dynamic lines. Okay. The more dynamic it is, the more fun it is. And it's like snaps you in there. Okay. But you have to have your lean and your edging or it'll dump you. This river and this level is phenomenal for practicing this because there's rocks everywhere. You just came in too far low. So you really want to be like on the rock when you catch that eddy. Like the left side or right side of your boat, whatever you're coming by, a lot of times you're just inches away. Inches away. So you came into the eddy there. And it's a little less dynamic in the, the swirl between current dead stops and mixing and then all water going that way. Okay. It bleeds out the further away from this rock or the whatever's causing the eddy. So the higher end you catch it, you snap in and you're good. Am I supposed to hold it up here, or here? When you stroke, the most important thing isn't the pivot. Okay. It's the offside stroke to get in there. To get okay. in there. And lean an edge away from the eddy. 
like you're skidding a bike out with brakes you got to counter that because you're stopping when you come in here okay. so just that that one last stroke and then a lean an edge and then you can put your pivot in there but it's the, it's the least important thing so there are a few components to catching an eddy boat placement boat speed stroke placement and timing and then how you lean your body and edge your boat and so a paddler learning how to catch an eddy may mess up any number or all of these components. And in this frame, you see I'm about to catch the eddy. I'm snugged up to the rock about as close as I can get. And if you actually watch closely, I tap the rock, which is okay. And then I place my stroke as I bust through the eddy line, which is there in red. So I'm prepared to do this. As soon as the video starts, I'll place the stroke in this case, I don't actually place my pivot stroke because I don't want the boat to spin out. I actually want to just use my edges and carve into the far side of the eddy. And at this point, I actually do drop that pivot stroke in so that the boat will spin on the stroke. The further in front of your hips you place that stroke, the quicker your boat will spin out. The further behind your hips you place that stroke, the straighter or the less of an arc you will perform as you're edging and carving into that eddy. And right there, I've stopped it. As you see, Yakoberry is not right up on the rock, and he's also placed his offside stroke a few feet too soon. And this is where the timing thing is more difficult. He is actually making the common mistake of focusing more on the pivot stroke than he is on actually getting his boat into the eddy to begin with. If you can get your boat across that eddy line, everything else takes care of itself. In fact, anything you do other than powering through that eddy line to include placing the pivot stroke too soon, just introduces more things for the river to wash you downstream with. By placing that stroke too soon, he sailed himself right out of the eddy for the most part. So make sure you're in the eddy before dropping that pivot stroke. Wait another. Wait till your butt's crossing the plane to put the left stroke in, or the last stroke. You put the stroke in when you were still up, not even in the eddy. Okay. You're wanting that pivot grab. Focus more on wait, 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 wait. Wait till half your boat's in the eddy, wait then the put your last stroke in okay. real hard. Okay. Okay. That's what gets you in there. What I do is slow down more once I'm in it. You, you will stop on your own. You don't do anything. Come in right beside the rock. Stroke. You don't even have to plan on that one. So as Adam approaches, he does a pretty good job of busting the plane, dropping the stroke, and he did not lean or edge his boat well. And this was so non-dynamic of an eddy that it really didn't matter. So you can practice on the gentlest of eddies up to some really dynamic hard eddies as they call them, fast eddies, whatever you want to call it. But it's all the same principle every time. Start where you're comfortable and work your way up, just getting the components down and the timing down to where it's gonna work for you. Right stroke now. That's really good. Like I know it didn't feel rock star because it's shallow and you went up on a rock, but that's exactly how you catch an eddy. Try to do a little more vertical stroke in general. All right, when I go in. Always. Like, unless you're out sweeping, and I'm lazy sometimes, I got bad habits from the touring. But when you're coming up on something, your, your stroke should look like this. Yours is looking like this. Yep. And you're not, you're not doing anything. Just go ahead and get the paddle in the water down to your hand. And that's where you get your, your forward power without sweeping your boat one side or the other. As it just kind of comes down beside the boat. Oh yeah, that's smooth. Yep, and now, stroke. How did that feel? In this case, Adam does almost everything almost right, if that makes sense. His boat placement, his boat angle, and his speed were just right for catching the eddy. And although he did a little bit of a duck stroke as he got into the eddy, everything else was right enough to finish the eddy for him. His edging and his lean was good. He had his pivot turn and he caught the eddy high. As you see, he's right behind the rock. So bravo for Adam on catching that one, and he just got better and better as the day went on.
Good. A little more stroke on that right when you'd have had it into the eddy mid rapid instead of after the. You catch one behind the log, that's a good setup, eddy. Yeah, just get in right behind that log on the left. Perfect. And with this next eddy, we're going to take it up a little notch and the difficulty is going to be getting past that strong current and then across that eddy line towards where I'm sitting. And if you don't match the intensity of the river and come across that line with some energy into that eddy, it's just going to wash you down the river. And that's what happens to Adam here. The strokes are kind of lily dipper strokes and it just kind of washes right on by. And that's a common mistake. And looking at it again in slow motion, when he turns and faces the eddy, he's actually set up pretty good, but he needs to start paddling now. But really he's doing these strokes where he's satisfying in his mind that he needs to be doing something, but he really didn't paddle with purpose to get where I was. And that current just picked up, added to his speed, and washed him right by the rapid. And now with Adam doing a little ferrying and a little bit of eddy catching and peeling out, we're going to start carving up the river a little bit for no good reason other than to practice maneuvering in and around through these rapids. So what I have him do is ferry across the river to river left, spin the boat, and then ferry back across catching these eddies to get back to far river right. He's doing most everything right, but as you can see his paddle is like it's in slow motion and it's not really in the water, he's just kind of grazing the surface. We just need to be a little more intentional, get that paddle more vertical, get that thing in the water, and put some berries on it. It's like in the water like this. Yeah. Get that thing vertical, get it in there. Ooh, <laughs> there's a rock that's gonna mess you up. <laughs> it got me too. Oh, what a jerk rock. Catch the setup, Eddie. And as Adam comes in here, he does not do his last stroke on the right. Rather, he started that pivot stroke while still in the current and it almost washed him back. Always make the last stroke on the off side, on the downstream side of your boat as you're breaking through the eddy plane. So Adam does a pretty good job of peeling out here and he's got to go right or left of that boulder. Right or left either right or left, smack right into it. It's such a common thing for a newer boater to identify the danger and then almost fixate upon it and not actually make a decision to paddle one way or the other. We had a good little chuckle and it's such a common thing for a newer boater to just sit there and drift into the danger as they quit paddling or really just don't make a decision. But in the future, choose right, choose left, come up with a plan, make it happen and never stop paddling, never stop fighting to get where you need to be. Don't just accept that you're drifting towards a rock or any other hazard or any other place on the river that you don't wanna be. Always fight for a positive outcome. But you can see it all turning, going that way. Just follow the bubbles. And we are getting towards the bottom of the middle hall and the hall river is braided in this area, meaning there's a lot of small channels and very shallow water. And at low water, it can be a challenge to find a way through, especially with this tall grass and not being able to see. But it's also really interesting when you get in there and start paddling through the maze work of channels. It's just kind of a neat adventure in and of itself. We got a little flow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
and catch a little setup out of here. Very nice. Oh yeah. All right, we got Yackleberry here, taking a break, about ready to shove back off. How are you feeling? Uh, about 50-50. He like looks so. better than 50-50, he feels 50-50. Yeah. With his eddy catching, he, he stroke times well, he stroke placement well, he leans, he edges, he carves into eddy well. What he's missing is driving across the current to enter the eddy in the right place. That's all he's missing now, so we'll work on that on the second half where we got all the big waterfalls and stuff, so. That's good. Yeah, all right. Just get it all done in one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's coming along. You ready to do it? I'm ready to do Got it. just a little bit more on the, on the uh, middle hall here. We took the far right side just to kind of explore. I can hear the bridge. Below the bridge is the lower hall, and then it'll get a little more exciting. How do you feel about that? Might as well get it done. It's low water, you'll be good. It? It's only like 560 today, but I'm proving to you, you can still have fun at 560 on the lower hall. Boom. You, you. you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Oh yeah. It's a good one. Get over, harder, harder. Yep. And one more stroke, you'd have had it. You just missed your offside stroke. Did I? Yeah. You skipped and went to the pivot because you had everything else lined up. Yeah. So you still caught it. But if you'd have done one more last right stroke, you'd have stopped up in there. Oh, yeah. Don't let go. That's called Eddie Bounce. <laughs> So you didn't, uh, you didn't punch through that eddy line and it bounced the front of your boat back out of it and then you were leaning the wrong way. <laughs> that was awesome. I was doing through any of that. I was like, uh... Just right there. So just punch it. You'll see it from where I'm at real easy. Just go right through there. Lean. Yeah. You're drifting again. Like you're pointing where you want to go, but you're not getting there. You need to counterpoint, get there, then straighten back out. Like if I want to go over there, I point way far over there to get over here, then I straighten back out. So as we cross under the double bridge at 64, we enter the lower hall. And at this point, we're going to kind of stop focusing on schoolhouse just a little bit and actually just focus on running the river, having a little fun, and implementing what we've already learned. So here we go for Adam's first time on the lower hall. Good, perfect, right behind the rock. Rock starred that one. Look at you, crushed it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. 
you still you're not doing your last stroke because yep. everything's lined up you're making it in here yeah. but if you want to one more stroke one more stroke as you're crossing let, so let scott through he'll have momentum so when i when i right stroke if i realize i did too early i go ahead and make another right stroke yeah oh, yeah. yeah that's not afraid of i think like you was telling me to do one side one side one yeah side, other, just no, time okay. it you can slow it down okay and then this time just go in there peel out okay. lean left a couple strokes a couple right strokes And we want to try to get right here, all the way right. Yeah, start aiming right. So this is Gabriel's Bend. It's the premier rapid on the entire run. It kind of goes along that rock, kind of be kind of center. Center right? Center. Just wherever, center anywhere. Just don't be too far away unless you're catching eddies, which they're everywhere. And then at the very end, you kind of eddy out to the left. Very end, eddy out to the left. Yeah, so it's just going to be mostly boogie wave trains, maybe one rock or two. Um, like if I was doing this with myself, I'd probably catch like 15 eddies left right. or right. Nothing to it. Get some out of woo. And straight ahead is the gum tree that fell across the rapid at the bottom of Gabriel's Bend. You can tell it's in a bad spot. It's already been removed. Note to self, when you see a tree hanging that far over the river, it's usually not going to be long before you're in there with some saws trying to get it out of the way. That's the gum tree that's gumming up Gabriel's Bend. So I'm going to try to cut that out tonight. <laughs> And now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Come 
on, get in there. Not great today. That's right. How'd you like that? Yeah, it's, it's, that's creaking. You ready? Just keep it banging through there. Are you going? Oh, yeah. Just kind of eddy up here. I'm going to see if they're coming. Yeah, look at them creaking. Running the gnar. Oh, yeah. Whoa, no, Scott. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Get that box. Yes, sir. Back in action. Here you go. Switch your right and left paddle blades. Switch your right and left paddle blades. There you go. Now you look like a professional. Just get your ferry set. Hold that angle. We gotta work on that next time. Yep. Fairing and being able to hold your boat angle yep. through a ferry. Yep. You're just washing each time. Get in there. Keep going. Very good. Sometimes it's ugly. Sometimes it's ugly, you just gotta be there. And so that was our run down the middle and lower hall, working on getting Adam up to speed in whitewater. Today we focused on eddies and touched on a couple other things. If you find yourself along the same progression as Adam, perhaps something we covered today can help you out. In any case, you know, sure thanks I for watching and go have fun on the river. Look at you, crushed it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one.